So we're here at the home of the National Museum of World War II Aviation in Colorado Springs, Colorado to take a tour of the facility. They've got like five hangars in here. They've got some really cool aviation stuff and a P-47. Hey folks, here in Colorado Springs at the World War II Aviation Museum. And apparently there's a gathering of P-47 Thunderbolts, better known as Jugs. And there's one out here flying around. I'll see if I can catch him when he goes by again. We got here just in time to miss him doing a, a, a wing over. Now he's landing. How cool is that? F3, F2. Man, is it busy here with stuff going on on the field. Cool aircraft. There's two Tiger Cats in here. Over in the corner, in USS Arizona in model form. How beautiful is that? Right down to the officers and seamen on deck. Beautiful. Tiger Cat is such a beautiful Grumman airplane. Has the same engines as our A26. Beautiful stuff. Now there's a B26. Marauder hanging from the ceiling. And there's a B-25. Man, if you've never been to this museum, it's pretty cool. Here's what remains of the P-47 Razorback. Man, what a mess. Must have got it out of a jungle somewhere. A Douglas Dauntless over here. Absolutely gorgeous. And an early Corsair. Here's another Grumman Tiger Cat. Still a beautiful airplane. And over in the distance over there is a a1 Sky Raider. Here's the P-47 that just landed. Man, I wish I could have caught the wing over on video. That was so cool. This is an SB-2C Helldiver. This is a really rare bird that's being restored. Here's a gorgeous P-38. Life of Lightning White 33. Wow. Beautiful airplane. Looks like a uh, Fairchild, oh, it's a Fairchild PT-19 being restored. Man, I wish we had the hangar space and the tooling these guys have. Look at all of this. Uh, the resources of some people. And here's a PDY 5A, or it might be a 6A, I'll have to look. Catalina. World War II long range uh, reconnaissance aircraft. It's 
So this is a 5A. It's on loan to the museum, but what a beautiful airplane. I've always had a fascination with them. So here's a beautiful example of an RV-10 being built. Looks like they have spared no expense in putting this together. How beautiful is that? There's the uh, cockpit enclosure fiberglass and the tail over there. Oh, there's the wings. Yep, the horizontal. I was wondering where all this stuff was and I just found it. Anyway. So according to the guys inside, the guy that flies this big bird is also the guy building the RV-10 inside. What a cool airplane. Absolutely stunning. Another airplane that has a special place in my heart. Gun sight and everything up there. Here's a 43 Willys Jeep. Prestone 43. Cool. So we're about to sit down and have some lunch and I walk up to the store and what do I see? Hold on. Uh, is this kind of like uh, Kilroy was here? <laughs> We're going to go in and see what this is about. Up here in the cockpit of the KC-97, which this airplane restaurant is based upon, yeah, it's pretty cool. This is the predecessor to the KC-135, still in use with the Air Force. Pretty cool stuff. Anyway, I just thought I'd give you a view of what the inside of this looks like. So this would be the crew station for the refueler and this is all the equipment in the back of the airplane. Got stuff in there that doesn't necessarily belong, like a starter and generator, but still cool. Busy place. That's where we ate, is inside there. Pretty cool. Texas Air Guard. Well, I made it back from Colorado and uh, went over to the Platers yesterday and picked up some parts that we've been waiting for. Hold on. Okay, so these are some things we've really been waiting for. These are the uh, hinges. I call them hinges, but they're they're the parts that go on the life raft door that hold it on the one side and then the pins lock it in on the other side. So we can put that together now that the, the uh, door is painted and the uh, uh, eyeballs are cleaned out and we can install that up on the uh, nacelle. And then we also got these. These were the last two locks that we needed to for the brake adjusters so we can get those installed. These are all parts for the axles on the, on the main gear, the nuts and washers. 
this stuff is for another project and this is a, a handy standoff uh, bracket to, to keep things so you can tie up wires and keep them off of stuff so anyway we'll see what happens today okay so one of the jobs that we were waiting for the CAD plating and come back for was these keepers for the adjustment nuts that, that uh, adjust the tension on the brakes for these stems they, they kind of work like your disc brakes in your car in that the torque on these allows the brake pucks to come off of the rotor enough so that they can free wheel but doesn't let it come too far out to be uh, not usable so I'm going to get these installed and I got the torque wrench here we'll get these all installed and uh, we'll be done with the brakes Okay, one more job off the tick list. The only thing we need to do now is get the tires and wheels on this, get the hydraulics built up, and uh, the, the build up hydraulic pressure, and, and uh, the brakes will be done. Anyway, onward. All right, the rest of these parts, these are the retainers for the wheel bearing seal on the nose wheel. These are the retainers for the wheels on the mains, and this is the carburetor feed fitting. And that's what I'm going to do next. I'm going to, well, actually, I'm going to go store these on the axles. These will go over by the wheel until we decide what we're going to do with the nose wheel. And I'll get this installed on the, the uh, carburetor. Okay, now this is where they stored the gasket when they overhauled the carburetor. So I'm going to put some grease on this and then uh, go ahead and stick the fitting on there. So stand by. Okay, those are torqued, so that job's done. Now on to, we got to get a hose mate that'll go from our, oh, by the way, hold on just a minute. So you remember a couple of episodes ago, we got these back up these stiffening brackets riveted in well here's the fuel flow send uh, fuel flow transmitters are installed we still have to tighten up the fittings when we figure out where all our hoses are going to go but that's another job that's done in my last video I talked about asking what people thought about painting or not painting the nacelles and while I was waiting for people to make comments I started walking around the airplane let me turn this around to see what would make a good demarcation line if we decide to, to polish the nacelles we are going to paint the wings but 
uh, I was trying to figure out where a good line would be for the paint to stop for the wings. I'm reasonably certain that the tops of the wings clear back to here will be painted, but the rest of this could be polished. And so I started looking around and I noticed something that we've missed for a decade. When I actually got to looking at it, I realized that this whole thing was torn. And so this has actually been a repair that wasn't a good repair. Let me show you another location of this same place. And after doing some more looking, I found another location that is not good. And some more investigation. All of these were supposed to be rivets. Now this one appears to be in good shape. And this one isn't bad either. So we've got the two inside ones that we've got to fix. So let me uh, formulate a repair plan and I'll get back to you. Okay, so here's the plan. I've made these repair panels and new hardware that will no longer be countersunk because there's no there's no countersink in that structure so we'll do that and when we go to put this on we'll take some PRC or Pro Seal whatever the name you want to call it it's a sealant and we'll seal this in place nothing will move around it'll close that up and take care of it so we'll get that done and i'll give you a show Okay, so that one's repaired. And that one's repaired. So those are ready to fly. Okay, so while everything else was going on, Jan was getting all of these hinge points on this door. And so we're going to put it in place and make sure everything latches. They're, it's kind of weird because these were held on not only with screws, but two rivets as well on every one of them. It's just weird. And why Douglas did that, don't have any idea. All right, so I'm going to get up on top of the wing and Jan's going to bring the door up. You want to hand me some?
Okay, in earlier discussions, we talked about these being a sight glass on the world. And you can see the pins down in there. So that's what those were about. This got a lot of glare, but the pins in. So anyway, one more project off the list. It's been a good day, been a good week. Uh, I appreciate you guys watching our videos. Hope you'll come back for more. If you haven't, please subscribe and likes help us out a lot. Anyway, we'll see you on the next episode. Thanks for watching.